Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be our next hockey video on the big kahuna finally happening, the trade we all been waiting for, Jack Eichel sweepstakes being won by the Vegas Golden Knights as they move Caden Krebs, a conditional first-round pick, a 2023rd third-round pick, and, of course, the speedster Alex Tuck to be able to get Jack Eichel. Now, I see people commenting, like, obviously, they didn't get as big of a return for this as the rumored Calgary trade. I feel like the rumored Calgary trade was just that some great analysts like Weeksy and others said that they heard his name mentioned, and they heard it thrown out there in terms of the trade. But I feel like the Flames kind of just came to their senses and realized, even for Eichel, you can't use a uni lose a unicorn player like a Chuck, who does all those great scoring attributes, can score you 70 points a season or more just like Jack, but also is that intensifier, um, gritty kind of agitate, not kind of very big agitator player on the other end that you don't see those guys grow on trees where he's a guy just like Eichel, you can put him anywhere and he's still going to be able to produce where Eichel, no matter who you put him with, is able to produce. So yeah, that would have worked out better for Buffalo, but I think really Calgary came to their senses because if you looked at Calgary's team, the comparison for the trade they did with Vegas, they should have honestly been able to match that without Kachuk, and I'm surprised they didn't push maybe to do a Monaghan, a Coronado, and Connor Zary, since they only got one uh, prospect in this trade, and then a first, or even two firsts, because if you're Calgary, this is the year you really want to try to go for it too, because you have Jacob Markstrom playing really well, and also you're going to be, you would have been bringing in Jack Eichel while keeping Matthew Kachuk on your team in that case, and you would have just been losing a center in Monaghan, and even if you had to throw Bachlin into the deal so they got another NHL guy, that would still be fine. You just couldn't lose Kachuk. That trade wouldn't have made as much sense for Calgary because it actually probably would have lessened their team because you would have lost Matthew Kachuk, who's a big part of that team. Yes, you would have been bringing in Jack Eichel, but then you're losing Johnny Goudreau in the offseason. So you would have wanted to have Kachuk and Eichel together. So you still had that two-headed monster going forward since Goudreau likely is, this is his last hurrah in Calgary and Monaghan might be in his second to last hurrah in Calgary. So, that's why I feel like I was surprised they didn't match it, but they didn't. So, here we are, as Vegas acquires Jack Eichel to be one of the most disgusting teams in the league once he comes back. They haven't been as peachy keen early, obviously, because Lauren Perceau has outplayed um, Robin Leonard early on this season. But Vegas is going to get going, Mark my words. This team's going to be a good team. And they're going to continue to be a Stanley Cup contender, just like they've been in every year since they've existed this far. Obviously, right now, Ike will be on LTIR. They hope after the surgery, he'll be back in four months, excuse me. Well, right now, they have Stone, who should be back the soonest <clears throat> on the LTIR, maybe in a week or so. That has been skating and everything. And Pacioretty, who's not expected to be back to late November, also on LTIR. But obviously, acquiring Jack Eichel, you're acquiring one of the biggest names in the league. That's why he's paid the $10 million bucks, and he's a potential 30-goal scorer, uh, 80 points and above guy at his best. Obviously, in 18-19, that's 77 games. He was able to produce 82 and have 28 goals. And the following, in 19-20, he was able to have the 36 goals with the 42 assists for 78 points. So Jack Eichel, whatever you need him to do, whether you want him to, on your team to be more of that 54 assist guy to 28 goals, he fits in perfectly with that, which is likely more what he'll do with the Golden Knights since they have other guys that can pot it in the net. You'll probably see the mixed stats. Or if you want him to be the guy that just puts it in the net like he did in Buffalo and had to do in 1920 with 36 and 42, he can do that too. That's the difference of a superstar to a star player. Alex Tuck, I would say, is considered a very good player where he's a guy <clears throat> that does great because he's one of the fastest inline skaters, just fast up the ice that Buffalo acquired. But you need to put guys around Alex Tuck in order for him to have his best success, where guys like Eichel and also Kachuk, which is why I think the Flames came to their sentence on that, you can kind of have anybody around them, and they're just that good of players. They're going to be able to produce at least the 60 to the 65-point threshold and make anybody around them look better. Where that's what, as time goes on, the top prospect, Peyton Krebs, who's a very good prospect, that is moving a little bit slower along, I guess, than what people expected, but he was only selected in the 2019 draft and has only appeared in 11 games. People hope Peyton Krebs becomes a star player. I don't think Peyton Krebs, a lot of people expect to become a superstar player where he can kind of do it all himself and carry people with him like the Eichels and Kachuk. 
But if you can get their top prospect in Krebs, you acquired to develop into a star player over in Buffalo. He's been <clears throat> the captain of the Winnipeg's ice. Um, he led the WHL in, in assists and points in 24 games. So he's a guy that's been productive at each level now. Now it's about just getting productive at the NHL level. He's been putting shots on net. He just hasn't got to the scoring sheet when it comes to this season in Vegas. So now it's about going to a new environment, going to Buffalo, which is a rebuilding team, going into that locker room with the leader, Kyle Ocposo, who's really stepped up and taken a huge role this year and being able to kind of adjust and change the mantra of that team, bring in new faces and also bring in new personalities, because that's really what Buffalo wanted. Honestly, the, the reaction of them not getting a lot, I'm not surprised. This is kind of the type of trade with how long it was taking and the fact that Eichel didn't want to be there. Those two things put together didn't make me think they were going to get a huge deal because they're trying to hold out for something that's not there almost, and was, was my view of it. And the only thing that would have been there is if Calgary hit themselves upside the head and forgot they can't trade Matthew Kachuk. So this trade, I think, getting Krebs, Krebs is a chance to be an all-star player if he fully develops. Alex Tuck, at his best, can already be an all-star player because if you look at Alex Tuck, <clears throat> he tallied 33 points with 18 goals and 15 assists in 55 games last season. But um, since 17 and 18, he leads all Golden Knights skaters to have played at least 100 games and even strength points. So Alex Tuck is not just a good power play producer because of his quickness and his lethal shot. He's a very good guy you want for the even strength, too. So I think when we look at this trade... Obviously, Vegas is getting the best part of the trade, but Vegas is not going to be in the top 10. And if we look <clears throat> at the Buffalo Sabres, I have it um, right here. If we look at the Sabres, when they haven't picked in the top 10, they have picked some decent guys. Well, you got Ryan Johnson, who was 31st overall in 2019, who's not flashy offensive while playing at Minnesota, but I've watched him a couple times. He's efficient in all zones and just a very poised, calm defenseman. So you got him with later picks. You got Matthew Samuelson, who's been very good for Rochester this far in his young career, uh, 32nd overall in 2018. And then you also, of course, got, well, this is 14th overall, but you got Isaac Rosen, that, that, that's not a likely to be that high of a pick. But you got J.J. Paterka, who's your third best prospect, really looking good over and obviously from Munich, Germany. And uh, he was great at the World Juniors, and he's kind of on the cusp, so he got him at 34. So Buffalo's been picking better lately, in my view, when it comes to the draft. Obviously, you got the Quins and Powers of the World, but that was first and eighth overall. You're not going to have that with this pick. They've been picking good out of the not out of the top 10 as well. So as long as they continue to do that, you got a top prospect in Peyton Krebs, who's likely to develop into an all-star level player. I don't think he's ever going to be those unicorns that type players like a Chuck that just is so good on the grit end and then so good on the point producing end, or just a guy that's a superstar that doesn't matter who's around him, he can carry the team like Eichel or Kachuk, but he's going to be a star, I think, in the making once time goes on, and you just got to be patient with Payton Krebs. He's only played 11 NHL games, and Buffalo, of course, isn't going to have the best people around him to get him going immediately as he jumps in there, and same goes with Alex Tuck. He's not going to have the best people around him to... um get people um, kind of going in the best direction when it comes to his numbers for Alex Tuck. So you're going to want to be able to be patient with those two guys coming into Buffalo, but I think they will work very good in Buffalo because Alex Tuck's one of the best even strength players in the league. With Don Granado, they're playing for the first time in years at a better pace and a better speed. And Alex Tuck, really, that's what he carries people around him to do, keep up with them and be able to produce with him there, because if you're a guy that's a quick skater, but sometimes you kind of glide, you can't glide with Alex Tuck on the air. So he brings that effort from everybody around him and carries them with that sight. But obviously the player that Vegas got in Jack Eichel, he just carries the team points. If you had, say, Stone, Pacioretty, Marsha So, and others on the IR at the same time, with this Jack Eichel trade, Vegas can survive that a lot better than years past because Jack Eichel already in years past, obviously once he comes back in four months, has just put the team on his back when it's come to not having guys around him. And that would be what that case would be if there was injury. So this is a great trade for the Vegas Golden Knights. But I also think 
in a trade that I expected for Buffalo. I didn't expect them like some people did to get a huge superstar back because at my point, when it came to them waiting so long, it seemed like they were just kind of delaying and waiting for something that wasn't there. And then once you heard they were pressured to move them as soon as possible, that's when it really felt like they were waiting for something that wasn't there and they were just going to take the best they could get. And Krebs is a top prospect. Tuck is one of the best five-on-five players in the league, also one of the fastest skaters in the league, and has one of the better wrist shots in the league, probably top 25 when it comes to his wrister. So you have a player that's good there as well, and a guy that's a star player, and another guy that has a chance to be a star player for a guy that's one of the best in the league. So yeah, it doesn't perfectly balance, but if you're able to hit on that draft pick too, you bring in three new faces that are good for your team for the price of one, and then the third round pick is a different story. Maybe you get a good third round pick in 2023, but that's not as definite. They've been picking better in the later rounds, as I said, with the people I aforementioned earlier, you got to be like the Johnsons of the world and others. You got to be able to keep doing that since this isn't going to be a top 10 pick. You got Krebs, you got Tuck. So I think this trade isn't as bad for Buffalo's side of things as some people are putting out to be in the immediate reactions just because they didn't get Matthew Kachuk. I don't think that was really realistic from the forefront. The Vegas Golden Knights have one of the best skaters in all of hockey now when he comes back and four months. Even if he doesn't come back in four months, uh, Eichel's going to be the Kucherov of this year that once Vegas gets in the playoffs, I look at that. There's Jack Eichel. So he's still going to be a great big part of them being able to make the run to the cup. And I think Alex Tuck and both Peyton Krebs, the reason why I don't think the trade will be bad for Buffalo is they're not going to ever be to the level of Jack Eichel, but you're getting two guys for one and three if you can hit on that pick like the, to get another Paterka or a Johnson of the world, then you would be hitting on potentially three guys that would be in your lineup in the future. And you're bringing in three new faces, three new personalities, three guys that are coming into the team and hoping to change the vibe of the team going forward that can stick around because Tuck has until I believe is 24, 25 on his contract. And of course, Krebs is still on his ELC. And then whoever you draft is going to be on their ELC. So I don't think it's as bad for Buffalo as people make it out to be. I think this actually is a chance to work out for both sides. It's just obviously you're going to see in the more immediate it working out for the Vegas Golden Knights who have a better chance and one of the best chances in the Western Conference with Jack Eichel on the team and everyone healthy in the Pacioretties and Stones of the World to win that Stanley Cup. This team is definitely one of those Stanley Cup favorites as long as Rob Leonard kind of gets his game going and gets his confidence up and gets himself going, which I don't necessarily fully blame him for a slow start since he's not just worrying about this, so he has to kind of try to be able to focus in on the game a little bit, but while still doing all the great things he does off the ice, and then the Vegas Golden Knights will get going, and will get vibing, and they're one of the best Stanley Cup contenders with Jack Eichel, but in flip, the Buffalo Sabres get one of the best 5 and 5 guys, and a potential future star player in Krebs, it's just neither of these guys are the, the, top kahuna just can carry your team no matter who's on their line player like Eichel but I didn't expect them to get somebody like that when they traded Jack Eichel most of the time when you trade a superstar nine out of ten you're not getting a guy that's the same similar to equivalent that's why that Matthew Kachuk trade honestly if they were able to do that would have been one of those historic trades you're like wow they got somebody that really almost equals but also is even different than Jack Eichel because Kachuk brings a whole different culture of I'm going to beat the crap out of you, but I can also score 70 points. So that's a unicorn type player. You don't see that all. But this has been a reaction to the Jack Eichel sweepstakes. Jack Eichel going to the Vegas Golden Knights as the Buffalo Sabres get paid in Krebs, a conditional 2022 first, a 2023 third, and also the condition is if it's in the top 10, which Vegas is, is won't be. And also, of course, Alex Tuck. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. And congratulations to Vegas Golden Knights fans on acquiring Jack Eichel. But also look forward to Peyton Krebs and Alex Tuck and whoever this better regimen that's in there now drafts with that pick next draft in Buffalo. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. This has been Sportsman News. I'm Jeff Boris. Subscribe down below on the easy-to-use widget up above if you enjoy the content. Peace out, everybody.